it's good enough for YouTube. Hello, welcome back. We're going to look at another classic David Gilmour solo today. Uh, this one is the uh, studio version of Mother from the Wall album. Now, just kind of in response to my lesson about the uh, first solo in Comfortably Numb, I read your comments with Gusto, and then Gusto went home, and I carried on reading the comments on my own. And um, it was quite intriguing, actually. One thing that hadn't occurred to me before that was pointed out by a few people is that I've got long hair. And that's a bit of a revelation because I did wonder what this stuff was growing off of my head. Yeah, it's kind of weird really because I would have thought that somebody kind of browsing through YouTube with an interest in guitars might have encountered a bloke with long hair before, but apparently not. But anyway, we're gonna break the solo down note for note and we'll do a little bit of a harmonic analysis of it as well because Gilmore uses arpeggios and chord tones a lot in his playing. Um, he's obviously known for the kind of the more kind of bluesy kind of minor pentatonic stuff, which is obviously a huge part of his vocabulary. But if you can repurpose some of these ideas, um, you can use them in your own playing and do your own thing with them. You know, you don't have to sound like a Gilmore clone. Get on with it. So before we get into it, please do hit like and subscribe. It will really help to grow the channel. I also have a completely free blues rock phrasing course which you can find in the description below. So we're essentially in, we're in a key of G major, the solo is essentially in a key of G major. Um, so this is the part of the song, of course mother's gonna help build a wall, you know, and it goes into 4-4. Four, four. Um, we're soloing over G, C, G, It's a, you know, it's a one, four, five, um, as in those are the chords, just uh, G, C and D. Um, but he's really, as I say, again, you know, same with the middle solo or the first solo in Comfortably Numb, he's really playing into the chord changes. So we kick off. I'm going to do this all with a clean sound, um, just so we're not hiding behind any kind of delay, 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 or, you know, modulation or anything like that. Um, we've got... That's the first phrase when we come in. Um, so that's a, a G, so that's 12 on the, on the G string. And then f uh, 13 on the B. We're gonna bend that up a whole step. And then, so you kind of let that bend drop, you pick it again, so. And then pick it, pull off to 12 and then back to 13 on the B, so. And then, what we got there? That's 14 on the D, pull off to 13, and back to 14. So, three, four, two, three, This is the next phrase. Obviously, as I say, as I said in the previous solos, and as I say, um, when you're learning any solo, make sure that you listen to this a whole load of times, and you probably will have been a fan of the song, um, just so it's in your head, because out of context, it's just gonna be a bunch of notes. Um, so we've got this phrase. Little bit of string skipping there. So uh, that's gonna be um, and is uh, seven on the A string, and then five on the G. I'm gonna do that twice. So seven, five, seven, five, seven, A, five, G, and then slide down to four on the G, and then over to five on the A string. It's a little slide into it. A little bit of a uh, whammy bar vibrato. I've learned to say that since the last uh, last lesson. And then we've got another phrase here. So 
that's on the A string, it's uh, three, pull off to two, back to three, and then you want to bend up a whole step and release it on three. If you can't manage that, um, you can slide it. Obviously, these are very, I've got um, a very thick bottom strings on this guitar. Um, I use 10s to 52s, so this is like a 42. My A string is a 42. Um, but it's not beyond, you know, it's not impossible. It kind of, I don't know, it's something really satisfying about bending lower strings anyway. But, uh, but yeah, as I say, you can slide it, or you can kind of play it, um, you could play it here. If you wanted. Um, it's probably best to play with this bend to bend with your third finger rather than your second. So you're going to find it a lot easier. Let's put those phrases together. So one, two, three, four. Next phrase, one, two, three, four. So what we've got there, we're kind of moving into the G major pentatonic um, fourth position, I suppose. So we do this kind of bar, bar partial, partial bar um, between the D and the G strings on 12th fret. So that's 12 D, 12 G, and then back to 12 D again. 12, 12, 12, 12 D, 12 G, 12 D, and then bend 14 on the G string. You kind of let it drop. Um, he kind of sounds like he's letting it drop by, um, you don't let it drop by a whole tone. There's a kind of, um, there's like a B flat in there. Um, so it's kind of letting it drop by a semitone. That's probably not by design as such. It's certainly not harmonically. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But um, it sounds more like a kind of, um, you know, just sort of an, um, an emotive kind of melancholy kind of dip musically rather than a kind of calculated, I'm going for this B flat note. I, I think had they used a different take, he might have... Um, you know, being uh, a little bit more, maybe taking it down to that A, you know, release the bend. That's just something to, to listen to, you know. Of course, you don't have to do that, but... Sounds quite nice. Because it's kind of bluesy, because what we're doing here, um, we're bending up to the, uh, we're on the G chord at this point, we're bending up to the um, major third. When you kind of release it by a semitone to that B flat, you're actually hitting a flat three, which kind of makes it a flat third, so kind of minor third. Um, makes it a little bit bluesy. Um, next phrase. So what we've got there, uh, we're bending up um, a whole step on 14 on the G, releasing it, pulling off to 12, and then to 13 on the B. And then this little move again. So that's 14 on the D, pull off to 13, back to 14. So. So, so far we've just been playing over the um, G and the C chords. Now at this point in the, in the progression, do -li do we hit the D, for the first time and then C back to G. So he really plays into the chord tones here. So again, it's that kind of sweeping thing um, that probably wasn't known as sweep picking back then. Um, 
but it's certainly you know there are notes going into those arpeggios the same as, as with comfortably numb so um sorry notes going into those bends should i say and the best way to achieve that if you think of well we're playing over a, a d chord we're going to take this triad so you yeah, think about this shape you know the top part of an f chord if you like um so that's uh, 11 on the G, 10 on the B, 10 on the high E. And you want to rake into it, sweep into it. So downstroke, downstroke, downstroke. But let that downstroke, it's like a classical rest stroke. You let it drop onto the next string. So it's kind of like a continuous downstroke. You want to get some separation in the notes, otherwise it's just a chord. Um, you can't really get much separation between the B and the um, high E string, unless you roll your finger. But it's not too dissimilar for, from a, a lick that he plays in Another Brick in the Wall part two solo um, in a different harmonic context maybe. But And then you want to hammer on and bend on 12 on the high E string, bend up a whole step, and then to 10 on the high E. So we're really outlining um, a, a D major chord. You know, we're bending up to that F sharp. Again, similar to, to licks that you hear in, um, in the first solo in Comfortably Numb as well. So, that would be third, you know, in relation to the chord, it's uh, major third, fifth, root, major third. And then back to the root. And then we do the same at, at this point. We're hitting the um, C chord. We play exactly the same lick, but two frets lower. You know, so you so he's kind of creating a hook there. You know, he's presenting a theme, and then framing it over a different chord harmonically, and you know, really, really playing into the chords again. You know, so this would be uh, major third, fifth, root, major third, and then root of the C chord. And it's beautiful stuff. You know, this, this is a re that there's a reason why people have an emotional connection to Gilmore's solos. Um, I said this in the last video, but I'll say it again just in case you haven't seen the last video. You know, so there's so much, um, you know, kind of speculation and analysis of what gear he's using, you know, what gauge strings, what guitar, what pickups, what pedals, you know. Um, but so much of it, as with any guitar player, is in the fingers. Um, you know, that's why you'll hear someone else play this solo and it will sound like they're playing it with boxing gloves on, you know. Um, but it's in his vibrato, with both with his finger vibrato. Uh, it's in his um, whammy bar vibrato. You know, it's in his slides. Um, it's in his kiss. That's where it is. Oh, yeah. So the next lick. So here. So we're going to do. 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 At that point, we're actually outlining a G major um, triad, but we haven't landed on the G major yet, not straight away. So we're kind of foreshadowing um, or anticipating the change. It's actually, I guess you would call it an add four arpeggio. So it's all uh, roots, thirds, fifths, and fourths as well. It's got that extra. I use this in my playing. I've got a video actually on under improvisation tips of um, how to use uh, add four arpeggios in your playing in a completely different harmonic context. They're kind of Gilmore inspired, but you're not going to sound like David Gilmore, you know, if if you uh, if you add these, if you frame them in a different context. But so what we've got here, uh, we've got thirteen pull off to twelve on the B, and we do that twice. And then fingering's optional. 
and then 12 on the G, 12 on the D, slide down to, um, but pick it, 10 on the D string, pull off to 9, and then 10 on the A string. So what we've got there, um, intervallically against the, the G chord, we've got 4th, 3rd, 4th, 3rd, root, 5th, 4th, 3rd, root. You know, playing right into the chords. That's a very... There's an Elton John song that does that as well. Candle in the Wind, maybe? I know it's one of the classics. It kind of... Candle in the Wind, Tiny Dancer? Yeah, probably Candle in the Wind. You know that... I don't know. Feel free to correct me in the comments. I've done a complete mind's gone blank Ken kind of moment. But and that's it. And you just sustain that note over the uh, over the G chord. A very very short solo. Very short and sweet. Um, did we actually look at what's going on harmonically at the start of the solo? Uh, yeah, here. So you know, root bending up to the fifth. This D note. That's a uh, uh, fifth, you know, down to the third. Diddly. At this point, the reason he's hit that C note is playing into the root of the C chord. And then this part here, that's... Um, that's the third. And then a flat three actually over the C, which kind of makes it a little bit kind of sour, a little bit bluesy. You know, gives it a little bit of an edge. Um, and then at that point, we're kind of, we're still over the C chord, I guess. Major seven, because uh, we're still. Actually, no. Uh, at that point, we're over the G chord, aren't we? So we, we're playing the yeah, uh, major third to the fifth of the uh, G chord, and then um, all that's happening over the C chord. Root major seven, uh, root. That's a ninth back to the root. Um, Similar thing harmonically to the first lick. Um, yeah, playing into the third. Yeah, that's, you know, similar relationship um, with, with the notes to what's going on in the first half of the solo. But, you know, everything is... Um, you can train your ear to do this as well. You know, some people who are really, really good ear players will kind of naturally gravitate towards chord turns and na na naturally gravitate towards the more desirable notes. But knowing the fretboard, knowing the intervals, knowing about harmony is hugely, hugely important um, to become a creative guitar player. Not only well, not only when you're kind of playing your own ideas, but when you're transcribing and deciphering other people's ideas, because, you know, you develop more of a bond with what's going on harmonically rather than just be kind of painting by numbers and just, you know, a random bunch of notes. Um, not to plug my courses, but I will. I have a very in-depth course called Master the Fretboard. Um, if your fretboard knowledge needs a bit of work, that that's like a five, six and a half hour course, um, which will really, really broaden your, your fretboard knowledge. Um, I also have a free course, a free blues phrasing course, um, which you can find a link to in the description. Um, in the description, there'll probably be some discount codes for some of my courses as well. I've got to earn a living. Um, and please like and subscribe this video if you found it useful. It will really help to grow the channel. And feel free to comment below if uh, you have any suggestions for future videos and I'll see what I can get away with. Cheers, everyone. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. I hate long goodbyes.